there's actually a study that the NIH did on the psychology of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And one of the excerpts that I found um, very interesting was they were saying, motivation is an integral component of human experience. Children spontaneously explore novel items and adults autonomously engage in new hobbies, even in the absence of clear extrinsic reinforcers. And this is like what Nikki is saying about finding the thing that you naturally feel present and in flow with. Um, thus, not all actions are driven by tangible external stimuli or outcomes known as extrinsic motivation, but are driven by internal drivers known as intrinsic motivation, where the activity is perceived as its own outcome. And then what's very interesting is in this study, they they haven't like per se completely proven this, but it was looking like uh, this was the outcome psych psychologically. And they say that the NIH study cites that the dysfunction of intrinsic motivation, so like the lack of having intrinsic motivation, may contribute to psychological issues as, quote, apathy in neurological disorders, anhedonia in depression, which is anhedonia is inability to feel pleasure, and negative symptoms in schizophrenia. So that actually, again, like having the absence of intrinsic motivation and this kind of makes sense when you break it down in terms of what that behavior would look like day to day it leads to certain psychological disorders or like mental health issues because if you think about it like to not have a drive from within is it's very difficult to feel like you want to do things it's very difficult to feel joy or to show up and go to work or to you know show up for a friend or whatever it is because there is a lack of like the juice coming from within so mm that's kind of where like the excess of external motivations I think ends up kind of sucking the life force out of you because you've basically given away to another person place or thing or feeling you know that desire that you would normally have within you to show up and like do the things you want to do and be or do or whatever like it, it basically is letting that go to someone else or something else which is I feel like what I know about trauma and the subconscious can tie into this as well mm. pretty much when we go through traumatic events in childhood our brain takes almost like a, a snapshot of that emotion that we felt and whatever it is that we were experiencing as a threat and a lot of times when we're children we aren't able to really process that emotion so we store it we store a program in the subconscious and that energy doesn't really go anywhere. And we start to get into these states as adults where we're easily triggered because we haven't yet healed the belief or the actual energy within the body. So just one thought alone can bring us down into a spiral of thinking that we're back in that same scenario. And I think a lot of us are walking around with unhealed trauma and we are not knowing how to regulate it. So we're reaching for things outside of ourselves to regulate that feeling. And then what happens is the brain starts to associate, let's say you pick up your phone every time you're feeling anxious, it starts to associate that with, oh, okay, this device helps us ease this feeling. And then mm -hmm. as you keep doing that, you start to receive more dopamine than what your body is actually meant to receive. And right. you're frying the dopamine receptors, kind of like what you were saying at the beginning of the episode. And you will no longer get that same hit of dopamine from just one scroll. You're going to have to scroll for more and more right. and more. And this goes hand mm -hmm. in hand with what you're saying, that as we seek for that external dopamine and that external reward, we are going to eventually have no way of feeling it from within because right. then going and going on a beautiful walk with your friend or just like literally sitting on the beach and like staring at the fucking water is not going to give you the same yeah. dopamine and reward as it normally would if you weren't so addicted to the things that were giving you that really cheap dopamine. It's like yeah. you have to be able to get your body into a state of working hard to receive dopamine back. And I don't mean working hard as in like hustling and grinding, which that can be the case, but it can also be like working hard to just be present <laughs> and like be right, in the present yeah. moment. Um, right. But yeah, it really does connect everything with like the trauma, the dopamine, the addiction, and what it is we are believing will rid us of that really uncomfortable emotion. Yeah. I mean, 
that's why people I think are starting I should say I guess scientists are starting to say that like social media addiction is like similar to what cocaine does to the brain oh yeah I I think I would have to fact check that but it's like when you hear about why cocaine addictions are so devastating it's really sad because then it's like even people in your life that you loved and that love you like literally don't cut it like they don't make you feel pleasure or joy or love because your like neurochemical balance is all fucked up like your dopamine and everything is completely wrecked because you've been able to spike it like that with nothing right wait i'm having like a moment now realizing this in terms of relationships these days because there will be times where like peter and i are sitting on the couch and we'll both be scrolling on our phones and i'm just like i have a moment where i put my phone down i'm like this is sad this should not be a thing but then there's another half of me that's like it's fine like fucking scroll it's fine and it's making me realize that the same way a fulfilling career takes work and then you get the reward back a relationship also takes work in that same way and a yes. lot of people aren't feeling the happiness of just sitting next to their partner because right. they're so attached to the phone and this has like been something that i'm really trying to make a cautious effort of of like really making time throughout the week to have like deep and enticing conversations that like stimulate our brains as opposed to like being so stimulated by tiktok right. yeah yeah, dude, it's huge. 